today we are going to talk about glomus tumor glomus tumor is a rare benign and very painful small tumor arising from the glomus body it accounts for 1 to 5% of all soft tissue tumors affecting the extremities now it's commonly benign however a malignant glomus tumor or otherwise known as glomangiosarcoma can very rarely occur de novo or by malignant transformation of a glomus tumor so before going into the tumor we must understand what is a glomus body a glomus body is a specialized arteriovenous anastomosis surrounded by glomus cells and smooth muscle cells its primary function is thermoregulation the normal glomus body is located in the stratum reticular or otherwise the reticular dermis of the skin it is seen throughout the body but is more concentrated in the digits that is the fingers and toes so this is how it looks like an arteriole a venule and the arterial venous anastomosis containing the modified smooth muscle cells this is the histology which shows it you can see the glomus cells this is the capillary space over there and these are the smooth muscle or modified smooth muscle cells macroscopically a glomus tumor is a well circumscribed tumor which is blue or red in color on microscopy it shows endothelial lined vascular spaces surrounded by clusters of glomus cells and these glomus cells are monomorphous round or polygonal cells with a plump nuclei and sandy eosinophilic cytoplasm now who has classified glomus tumors based on the proportion of the glomus cells vascular structures and smooth muscles within the tumor so we have three variants known as the most common is the solid glomus tumor that accounts to 75 percent it has a prominence of glomus cells the second variant is glomangioma it accounts for 20 percent here the vascular spaces are more prominent now the third variety is a glomangiomyoma that accounts for the remainder of five percent here both the vascular as well as the smooth muscle cells are prominent this is the microscopy of a glomus tumor you can see the predominance of the glomus cells and this is a glomangioma you can see the larger vascular spaces and this is a glomangiomyoma which has both the vascular spaces are big as well as the uh, there's an increase in the amount of the smooth muscle cells now regarding the clinical features of a glomus tumor it is usually seen in the fifth decade of life it's a solitary as well as sporadic but yes there have been familial forms of glomus tumors the most common site is the tip of the finger or the nail bed of the fingers and toes and other common sites include the palmar surface of the fingers the palms soles as well as the forearm it usually presents as a single painful small swelling red or blue in color in some individuals the swelling may not be clinically palpable however the pain will be severe in such individuals now nail changes may be seen like color change splitting or fissuring or thickening of the nail patients with glomus tumors classically present with paroxysmal severe pain usually preceded by cold or by pressure so slight touch can result in pain or exposure to cold can trigger the pain even if there is no actual swelling those who have a very small swelling which is not clinical papal may still have the symptom of pain the pain when present is severe stabbing or burning type and is worsened by touch now the investigation is always an x-ray of the finger or the toe these are usually normal but in the case of long standing 
uh, glomus tumors there can be bony erosion of the phalanges an ultrasound of the finger or the toe may reveal a solid hypoechoic mass mri is the investigation that gives the diagnosis you can see a well defined mass which is dark on t1 imaging and bright contrast enhancing on t2 imaging now there are tumor markers which are positive for a glomus tumor the sma the smooth muscle actin msa muscle specific actin h caldisman wymentin is usually negative for s100 now here why i mentioned that is because there is a group of uh, other tumors known as glomus uh, they are also been previously called as glomus tumors but they represent paragangliomas like glomus jugular glomus tympanicum glomus vagal now these are tumors in the head and neck and they are paragangliomas so they are positive for s100 now this is a glomus tumor but is different from them and hence it is negative for s100 this is how it looks like this is the tip of the finger 50% of the glomus tumors affecting the finger are there and the remainder 50% are under the nail or subungual and a less number is seen in the middle phalanx so here you can see the bluish discoloration more zoomed up here differential diagnosis includes a subungual melanoma granuloma pyogenicum or pyogenic granuloma squamous papilloma a nevus a paraganglioma nodular hydradenoma now the treatment is total surgical excision now for lesions under the nail we have the option of avulsing the entire nail and excising the lesion or you can go ahead with a direct transungual excision through the nail so you can see the nail avulsion and the lesion over here this is a transungual you can see direct cut through the nail and uh, try to excise the lesion so saying this i thank you